So I'll take a pause. Can you do a pause? So, can you put pause? Can you put the computer set on? It's going to show you off to split your terrier. Split what? Well, just because we're doing all right. Everybody, here's my boy, here's me. We're doing good. Okay. Saul's so gonna play some Switch. Made this though, that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it, man. That's it, man. All right, hello everyone. Oh, so it's been a, a bit of a, a thing. Um, most of you know <clears throat> that follow me know that my wife was diagnosed with coronavirus and went to the hospital. She came back yesterday. It's been somewhat stressful, but um, here I am back doing my work, um, trying to remain healthy, trying to remain strong, and try to keep sharp at what I do without going too sharp. All right, so I thought I'd add a little look at some long toady things for everybody today. I did a little bit before, but um, you know, having taken a couple of days off, I need to shake hands with my clarinet a little bit more. So um, I'm gonna do a little long tone exercise that deals with twelfths. The clarinet does not vibrate like every other instrument. In fact, it vibrates like almost no other instrument. It vibrates as a stopped cylindrical pipe, which means that instead of an octave, it means instead of an octave, I vibrate on roughly an octave and a half, a little bit more. So instead of getting this every time I hit my register key, right, I get. It's a very characteristic thing of the clarinet, and it's something that you need to take care of. I'm going to do that with a little long tone exercise. First, I'm just going to like, I'm going to massage some twelfths for myself, just like this. The beauty of that is I don't have to change any fingerings really. I'm fingering this and then on the back of my instrument this is where I, my thumb goes okay and then uh, if I'm fingering that that C here that's a one my thumb this finger this finger and that finger that's it that's a C and then to get the other note that I'm doing I'm squeezing this which is called the register key keeping everything else down and I squeeze that and when I'm doing this I'm not trying to pop things. You don't want to pop. That leads to some gross sounds. What you want to do is you want to squeeze it like a lemon. Just give it a little... Oh, now, some people are like double-jointed and have this kind of thing going on. I am not. This is how... Here, let me sit down. This is how the angle of my thumb rests on my clarinet when I'm playing. So I've kind of got like this aspect that goes somewhat... Um, somewhat slanted, okay? So up and to the right, and then I just do this for, for a register key. No, no big deal, okay? It's pretty much the way you should be playing unless you're double jointed. Fat part of the thumb, fattest part of the thumb on the actual hole, and then just just the barest little, little motion to make it work. So let's do that again, just the same thing. Nice, nice mezzo forte. Again, just taking the, the register key, not slamming it, just giving it a little whip, just squeeze it. Give it a squeeze and it'll go. So, like this. If you're doing it right, your notes kind of bleed into each other. They kind of 
there's a really soft edge between the two of them. If you pop, if you pop that register key, you'll often get something that sounds. You hear there's a bump right up the top of that uh, as you go over that note, and that's I want to avoid that. <clears throat> so I get that with good, uh, consistent airspeed, and then just squeezing that not hard, and then also changing my voicing from ah to like e inside of my mouth. <laughs> There's actually a lot going on, but it should sound roughly like Those two sounds kind of elide into each other. Elision is like in a lot of languages that aren't English, and sometimes even in English, you might end uh, end, a, end a word on a syllable, on like an ah, and start the next word on an ah, and you just shove them together. It happens a lot in poetry. So it's it, you just want those notes to sort of cross fade into each other rather than any sort of bump or, or hard cut. So I'm gonna start there again and keep climbing up. the higher you go the more air speed you're going to get so you really want to make sure that you have good focus in in uh, in the exit in where your where your your muscularity is blowing air through the horn and keep that air spinning as though uh, as though the, uh, whatever you're, you're you're charging up inside of your body is full of vibration and electricity rather than something that's more static and then again, ah, ee, over the break. Mm. Ah, ee. <laughs> mm. And if you don't have that good airspeed, you're going to get something called a subtone. It sounds like this. You hear that other tone coming in on the bottom? It's actually a pretty cool sound if you know how to do it. So in order to make that happen, why don't we start with that sound if you're having trouble with it and then futz around with the interior of your mouth to get rid of it. So like this maybe. If you're able to control uh, going in and out of that multiphonic and that subtone, then you're going to be able to control all parts of it because you're going to know what inside your mouth is happening. Now, it's really hard to describe what's actually happening when I do that, but actually, my if I if I'm looking at the interior inside of my mouth and my tongue is kind of floating around inside of here, the lower note my tongue is kind of down here, but as I play the higher note, my tongue shifts into a higher gear. So I'm, if you say the the word uh, the syllable ah. Uh, and feel where your tongue is at. Uh, it's just kind of lolling about down here in your in your mouth. But if you say the the, the syllable e, your tongue kind of curls comes up in this fashion. And what that does actually is it makes this this passage of air that's going through here smaller. And just like it like water, if you suddenly make the aperture of of of, of where water is coming through smaller, it has to make it faster the water has to go through faster to make it to the other side that's how you get things like hoses and um uh water guns is just like closing down that aperture until the water has no choice but to speed through really fast and it's the same thing with air so from ah uh, you're just kind of like closing down that Finally, just the thumb. There were a couple.
couple in there that I would take to the bank. Okay, so, um, you know, that's a little warm up that I like to do every now and again um, to just make sure that my voicing, that is what's inside of my mouth, is working well, that my air is just moving through the horn in a beautiful way. Now let's do some technical work. This is what we're here for. All right. <clears throat> so today I'm working on D minor, which is the relative minor of F major. I have one flat in this key signature, but there are three different forms of a minor scale, whereas a major scale really only has one form. The minor has a natural form, which is the same as the major, basically. Uh, a harmonic form that raises the seventh scale degree both up and down and a melodic form that raises the sixth and seventh degrees of the scale on the way up and lowers them on the way down it's important to be facile with all three of these forms of course and the way that i just sort of get through the natural form of the minor is to do the same thing that i do when i start practicing the major scale and that is to do two octave modes in that key so here i am in d natural minor one flat b flat everything else is natural I'm going to start on the lowest note of my horn, that's this low E. And then I'm going to go two octaves up and down on each scale degree up until F. Super even. I'm looking for beauty of sound. I'm looking for evenness of tone all the way up, up and down the instrument. I'm looking to not rush the metronome, and I'm looking to just like check in on every level how evenly and beautifully I'm playing. So, two octave modes, D natural minor, like this. One. forte, looking for vibration and resonance, not volume. You don't want to underfeed the instrument. You want to just go ahead and let all of this air flow through from top to bottom. Now, moving on to the scales themselves, I'm going to move it up to 100, which is where we start our scales usually. And we'll cycle through each scale individually. So I'll take the D harmonic minor up, up speed first. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to retake D melodic minor. Okay, so D harmonic minor, we trade a C, C natural for a C sharp up and down, so like this. <laughs>
but with a little bit more f up to the top of the horn, down to the bottom of the horn, and back up for a full circle, like this. Try to do four of them in one breath. settle into that a little bit. Let's do another another run. Let's see if we can get five in this breath. I doubt it, but we might. Okay. Ends up being quite long for a circle to come uh, uh, all the way around. Okay. Taking the subdivision off now as usual, going to 120. Same thing, really trying to settle into that tempo, settle back into the tempo, not rush the metronome. Really just try to be even and beautiful all the way up and down. Um, you know, as usual, if the how is correct, the when will get there. What I mean is, if your means of doing it continue to be solid, eventually you're going to get there. It's a, it's a guarantee. So I'm just trying to remain super solid. Same thing, harmonic minor, 120. says the scales are easy is a fucking liar man because that just like I don't suck okay and that like that just took all of my mental energy is it even is it clear over the break or is the tone the same all the way up and down is it even again I know I said it again but that's my number one goal um, dude if you're if you're really hustling for that and you're really thinking about it scales will kick your ass Okay, and they should, and, 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 and if you can win that battle, now we're talking, 140, same thing.
Yeah, it's okay to take extra reps if you're like, if you feel like you're swinging into things. You know, why not? What am I doing here? Am I, uh, am I, I'm not on stage. This is for me, right? So a little extra love for myself when I feel like things are starting to round themselves in. You know, first day on any scale is going to be not quite exactly where you want. It might be really fine, but by day five, it's really, really, really sparkly. So <clears throat> let's try melodic minor now that we got through harmonic minor. 100 with the subdivision on. As always, B natural, C sharp on the way up. C natural, B flat on the way down, obviously. scales uh, <clears throat> the first time they go through or, or, or the first few years that they go through scales uh, melodic minor can be a little bit of a mind fuck you know because uh, it changes on the way up and the way down but once you get it drilled I think it's actually easier than harmonic minor because harmonic minor often has this problematic like uh, 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 augmented second but when you get it right, a melodic minor scale just kind of moves almost like a major scale, just really sort of fleet up and down if you do it correctly. Same thing, four reps. One. Tempo, I'm really putting putting the brakes on my hands a lot. They my break my hands want to run forward at that tempo. But part of the discipline is to really just keep everything held, keep everything exactly where it's supposed to be in the tempo. If you can control things like that in in small degrees and still maintain that discipline when you want to rush, that's good shit. 120, same thing. Easy, beautiful, even. which is good. I think I'm, that means I, that my breath is really starting to, to warm into the day, which is what I'm looking for. I usually have like this nice spirometer near me where I can test and expand, and I did order another one, but uh, my wife took it, and she's got the fucking coronavirus, so I ain't on that shit. All right. Here we go. One, two, mm, mm, mm. to be a little pearl, you know, uh, a, pur a pearly technique is just like the shit. 140, this is more my top end for, for day one is for, for the scale, so still looking for something quite fleet, but something quite even and easy at the same time.
Yo, so not everybody knows what I might be doing with the reed when I when I futz around with my clarinet. So let me just show you real quick, just in case you don't know. So this is a reed right here. Um, in fact, you can see back here, it's a Van Doren V12. These are made in Paris. Number four, um, this kind of blank bark. And if I can show you this, look how thin this is. Uh... In, in, in cross section, the, the 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 very tip of the reed is extremely thin, and I've got like this little window here. You see this like a uh, kind of almost rectangular window, right? And the reed will fit directly on that window and vibrate properly when it's sort of all when it's on all of these surfaces. Now, when I start to mess around with the reed, like you saw how thin it is at the tip. Let's see if I can do that on this. Yeah. If I mess around with that, it's very, very, very small tolerances. So maybe it's ever so slightly heavy, heavier on this side than it is on this side. Well, if I tilt the reed just a slightly in that direction, then it will play a little bit better. So when I'm making those small adjustments, I'm really just looking for like teeny tiny tolerances inside the reed that are going to give me better results. But generally speaking, unless it vibrates well on the whole, it's not really going to give you a miracle if you put it in like the right spot. Every now and again, there's a read like that, but it's pretty pretty rare. All right, uh, I'm going back for arpeggios now, as always. I do the same routine every day, every day, mainly because I suck. And and when I say that, I mean that like there are some musicians for whom they're just whizzes and they could do things technically with no problem whatsoever. I am not one of those guys. I have to practice. I have to make, I have to be disciplined as hell. And you know what? Frankly, so does everyone who's successful. Once you get to a certain level, everything is difficult enough and the tolerances for mistakes is low enough that you really got to be on point or else you're going to be playing on the second string forever. And that, that's not for me. I want to be in the game, baby. I want to be on Sports Center. That's what I want. I want. To, I want a fucking star. Well, you know what? Being Scotty Pippen would be fine. All right. Uh, being a solid pro is really, really what you should be trying to do. After that, everything is gravy. Because you know what? There aren't a whole lot of solid pros out in this world. So we're gonna do the arpeggio here. Should go well, I think. and difficult but honestly yeah right <laughs> it is show business thanks dude I know Squid I do know Squidward he is the world's best clarinet player he and I play duets and uh, and uh, then he he kills me afterwards because I'm terrible um, thanks uh, I got a lot more a lot more liquor upstairs I'm gonna put a different bottle up in front every day because um, it's COVID time okay so here we are. Um, slur two tongue two, 110. Slur two tongue two, tongue one, slur two tongue one, slur two tongue two. 
Articulation when you get up to those high Fs can be somewhat problematic as you see. But by, by tomorrow, it'll work itself out. There we go. 120, no, no, no tonguing, two reps per breath. I corrected, I was able to correct what I did the first time. The first time I rushed my ass off. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I really do. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was there many times. Uh, I was able, like, back to, back to it. I was able to organize that by slowing my ass down. I did not rush. I wanted to rush. I did not rush. So let me try to see if I can organize that for myself in my brain again. It's a Christmas miracle. If you try to do it correctly and you think about it and you work on it, it'll come correctly. And I'm going to interrupt this scale. Harmonic, uh, Melodic minor all the way through, so raised on the way up and then lowered on the way down. If I can remember the range, it goes like this. starting to flow a little bit. Go to 120, do the same thing. Two reps of two reps. finished with thirds in this range and then we'll actually move on to some fucking music thank you perfect that's what I'm working on baby
Now, again, for that high, for high G, right, you could go from this F here um, a couple of different ways. You could go just add these two fingers and try to come back down. It's a little hard at that range, so you can, you can give yourself a little bit of a headache. But what I like to do is I like to go, I half hole anyway. So I'm half holding here with this finger, and then from uh, F to G, I just go to this overblown B here. So it goes. And it never goes away, and it's never a problem, and it's always in tune. So that's why I do it. If you must know. All right, now I'm going to actually show you some fucking music, which is nice. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome, really. Okay, so I'm going to move on to what's called uh, exercises by a guy named Fritz Krebs here. Look how nice that looks. Yes. Let me turn down the brightness a little bit yonder. Let's put this on except for... Uh, bust out some Bluetooth action. Um, make it a little bit bigger, I think. All right, nice. Only thing is, is that I actually have to print those pages out for myself. Give me one second. No, nope. yes, one second. All right, sorry about that. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so what these are um, are exercises by Fritz Krepsch, clarinetist from a long ass time ago. What you, what you do with these is um, these are kind of like fast long tones and they get faster and faster as you go you see it's we start with 16th and then we go into some sextuplets down here and then eventually on the next page um, 
really just moving into 32nd notes all the way throughout, which is kind of gnarly, but that's okay. This is what we're here for. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the metronome at the exact same tempo throughout. Eventually that's going to be 60, but for now, because we're still in the early days of D minor, I'm going to go at 50 with the subdivision on and really just try to be perfect. Really just try to be perfect throughout. And, and as the days go by, the speed gets faster and all of this basic work that I'm doing at slower tempos is going to really, really pay off. All right, so here I go back to back to 50. Eighth note subdivision on. Okay, so these 16ths are quite slow now, so there's no excuse for wrong notes, there's no excuse for it not being legato, there's no excuse for it not being beautiful. So, um, let's get started. I'm just going to start the metronome at 50 and blaze it. And then I'm really going to blaze it after I'm done. So here's number 65. We're starting at the top of the page again. We set the metronome at 50, and that's where we're going to leave it. So. a nice start nice and easy really almost dragging in the metronome all the way through these are fast long tones okay beautiful super sustained super legato let's keep going 66 Civilization 6 is pretty sick. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know what you want, but you want me to play the theme? I don't, I don't remember the theme. Oh, look at it. time dude when I throw on that high B again I use this B and it's money money baby every time man every time
Some of them at this tempo I will do only twice instead of four times just because I just... Come on. What am I doing here? This one, another, uh, another high one. I'll probably do this one four times. Yep, 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 not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> All right. Now these, this is the kind of exercise that shows up quite often in crepes, and I do it two different ways when I, when I find it. One is to separate these, these intervals by a lot. them but keeping the articulation in between them but to make it as legato and as connected as possible. challenging but um, much more of a, a truth teller it'll tell you the truth as to where whether you're blowing through the instrument in the right, correct kind of way next one I'm just going to do twice hopefully uh, 72 Six tuplets. Now I'm never going to skip off the four reps. Every time that I go, every everything faster than sixteenths, no matter how slow, I never disobey the four reps per per exercise. So number seventy three. Mm. Alright, 
So this time I'm actually using a real high G fingering instead of using this, you know, I like to overblow that B a lot here. I'm going one and three and one and two for this note here. Okay. And the important part of that is to not, not worry about it and not strain for it. You know, a lot of younger players will be like, but all of that tension is a killer. Right? I'm just going to lay completely back, try to change as little of my physical affect as possible. No big deal. Make it no big deal. Make it part of the same tone and the same sound and the same idea that you're doing down low. Don't make those G's have to be, don't make high notes have to be special. It's just part of our range. It's no big deal. Somebody asked me about my staccato on this stuff, um, which is, I think, pretty nice on the whole, nice and sort of pearly, but I just remember that the word staccato means separated. It doesn't mean short. So a lot of these notes that sound separated are actually quite long if you listen to them from the beginning of this. is not really that short. It's just in context to the notes that are around them that are so long they sound separated, but they're definitely not like or anything like that. Nice and easy. Just the slightest dee da 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 is really all it is. It's no more complicated than that. Yes, my boy. I feel like done with this way. Okay, can you put this, just put it down where, where you were, and can you go upstairs and maybe Rami can give you some reading? Almost done. Almost done. Uh, 74 now. Just moving along at 50, same tempo throughout. You know, my hands really want to run away with this, but at this tempo, we really want to just keep things nice and steady. Let's go into the next page, baby. I do play the sax also. Yes, I do. Not as good as this, though. Um, luckily, you know, it's like when you, you get to a certain point, you don't have to double anymore. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, okay, so here's the four, four last exercises. Um... Yes, I do. Yes, I did. I do play the sax also. Here we go. So here we are, as relaxed 30 seconds as we can make.
Hey, man, it's my pleasure. You know, this is, uh, there are there are times on the stream that I'm going to like. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring out the sax sometime for sure. Um, I've got a nice, sweet bass clarinet over here that's pretty gnarly, too, that you'll like to listen to. <clears throat> you know, a lot of old students and, 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 and colleagues that I, that I do this kind of work on cam for, this is the least kind of entertaining shit that I do, but I will occasionally actually play music music. But I also try to show people exactly sort of what the daily life of a high-level classical musician is, which is a lot of sort of maint maintenance and maintaining your, your edge a little bit on, on hard stuff. So here's number 76, same tempo, 50th subdivision, 100 if we're looking at 16th notes, 50 here. Percussionists are the shit. I'll tell you why. You gotta learn to play so many different instruments. You gotta lug all of this equipment around. I was in a in a chamber group, a traveling group with a percussionist one time, and literally we had a van shoved full of percussion equipment. Like half of the time of our setup was just putting the percussion together and taking it down when we had to. But I, I admire percussionists a lot. Nobody has better rhythm. Nobody Nobody keeps everybody in, in line better than the percussion section, that's for sure. Here we go. Number 77. First times I pull out a fake note. Yeah, dude, see you. Um, uh, usually you want to go uh, from A to D, looks like this. But you can get a really out of tune one too if you just let go and don't put any fingers down. The more, the better you get at it, the closer those two notes are, but right in there is one of the first times, right at this note, right there, that D, right there. Body is one of the only times that I actually use that cheat. If I'm going in slow motion, I go from the beginning of, uh, yeah, from the beginning of that line. If you do it right, then it doesn't really stick out that much. Well, here we go, one more time. Let's finish this off with number 78. 
Um, and then we'll see. Sometimes I'll throw out some hard shit at you or something. Somebody's got to practice, but I got it. All right, buddy. I'll be back later. Taking a break. Taking care of my boy. Thanks very much for your attention. I really, 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 